Okay, in my rebuttal to his open, yes, the law of agency, it is biblical, uh, my opponent said, but limited. Certain things do not transfer. I would agree with that. Certain things like the son is said to have been begotten, that is procreated at a certain point in time. We all know Psalm chapter 2, verse 7. Today I have begotten you. That is a certain specific point of time. Yes, I agree. Not all things transfer, like the fact that the son is said to be or to have been super exalted, not just exalted, but super exalted, according to Paul in Philippians chapter 2. So he's raised up, right? He's super exalted. Obviously, God cannot be exalted or super exalted. Certain other things do not transfer. The son suffers and the son dies for our sins. Obviously not. So yes, concept or principle of agency, we are not saying it covers all bases because obviously the father is not the son. And I know my opponent is not a modalist, but I'm trying very hard, you know, not to uh, treat him like a modalist, like a oneness, because it's so close. The Hebrew Bible is explicit, my opponent said. Yahweh alone sits enthroned. And then he quoted a few Old Testament texts that obviously I would agree with. But the problem is that note, not only the verse, some of the verses he quoted, for example, I think he said, the only Lord in heaven, no God besides me. Okay, note that within the verses he quoted, and obviously the context in which they are quoted, if you read the whole passages he's quoting from, you will note the fact that the Hebrew Bible, in this case, tens of thousands of times uses singular personal pronouns like me, myself, he, him, etc. In any language, Hebrew, Greek, you don't have to know Hebrew or Greek, by the way, to understand that that can only mean one single individual, one non-human person, not more than one. When my opponent quotes you all those Old Testament texts, that I obviously agree with, then the question, uh, which person is he talking about? Jeremiah, Isaiah, or whoever he's quoting, my opponent. The fact is you cannot logically and numerically have more than one, only one. My opponent, he did not say the Shema is, includes Jesus, but I think his appeal to 1 Corinthians 8 He's appealing to this uh, well-known practice by, I must admit, some scholars who, show, who should know better, this practice of uh, splitting uh, the Shema at 1 Corinthians 8, 6. So let's look at that verse again, 1 Corinthians 8, 6. Paul says, for us Christians, there is one God, the Father. If Jesus is included, as my opponent seems to imply, in the Shema, or is somehow part of the Shema, I'll let him explain. Why would Paul not say something like, there is one God, Father and Son, from whom are all things, for whom we live. Why not? It should say that. But the fact is that for Paul, the one God, or simply the word God, just is the Father, according to my count, 40 plus times throughout his letters. A good example for you to do, or a homework, you could do is just read some of his letters, read his greetings or his uh, farewells, and you will see things like, to the one God, the Father, and our Lord, Messiah, Jesus, greetings to you, etc. He talks about calling upon Yahweh, so we call upon the Lord Jesus in the New Testament, true. But it seems like my opponent is saying, and again, he can explain himself, that every time you read Lord in the New Testament in reference to Jesus, somehow you have to think of the divine name. It sounds like that's what he's saying. But Jesus' note in the New Testament is the Lord Messiah. In other words, the anointed Lord. If the title for Jesus of Lord means Yahweh, you will have all kinds of problems and issues trying to explain how he is the anointed Yahweh. That's just an impossibility. The fact that his Lord is simply a title for the fact that he has been given all authority in heaven, on earth, under the earth, which is what we believe, which is what I confess. 
But note, the New Testament is very clear. He has been given all these things. He has been made Savior as well. <clears throat> But that does not mean he is Yahweh, the, God, the one God of Israel. I think my opponent simply seems to be making a very lethal, scary, I must confess, fallacy. He's committing the fallacy of saying to you, well, because Jesus shares titles with the one God of Israel, because Jesus shares in the attributes of God, the one God of Israel, Yahweh, for example, God saves. Oh, look, Jesus saves. That does not mean they're the same identity. They're the same one God, which is, I think, what my opponent is saying. Is Jesus the same Yahweh as the Father? My opponent said that either Jesus is Yahweh uh, because uh, you cannot be talking about a created being. You will note a very interesting thing. I learned from a Trinitarian apology scholar called Robert Bowman in his book, Putting Jesus in His Place. Robert Bowman educated me on the fact that the New Testament never ever says that creation is from using the Greek preposition ek, from the Son. It is never said by any New Testament writer, according to Robert Bowman. I agree, Jesus is called Savior, going back to the titles. He's even called God. I must admit that. He is given the title God. But these are titles that should not be confused with the same identity. It's wrong to say that. For example, can you imagine if I said, well, you know what, pagan kings like Artaxerxes Arter is called king of kings, you know, in the Old Testament, in the book of Ezra, the book of Daniel, I believe, or the fact that God says that he sends saviors to Israel, plural, in Judges 2, Obadiah 1, Nehemiah chapter 9. Oh, that must mean they're somehow part of the divine essence or Uzziah or being. Uh, it's wrong. Elijah, the great prophet, he raised the dead brought up rain on the land, Elijah. He even opens the womb of the woman so she can have children. Well, guess what? All those things Elijah is said to have done, and this is in the first Kings chapter 17, 18 and second Kings 4, are unique in other places said of God. God raises the dead only, Ezekiel 37. God alone brings rain, Deuteronomy 28. God alone opens the womb of women, Ge uh, Genesis 30. Here's an important uh, advice. We'll take it for whatever it's worth. You must define Christology according to the Shema. Here are Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, one Yahweh, Deuteronomy 6.4. Christology must commence and end understanding that statement. Because one Yahweh or one Lord cannot be more than one single individual person, non-human.